This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. One third of information security jobs require a cybersecurity certification. While organizations are hungry for cybersecurity talent, the cyber skills gap grows daily. The average salary for cybersecurity specialists is $116,000. ACI Learning's programs can get you certified. To maintain your competitive edge across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. The the headline of my latest Samsung Galaxy S23 review is Samsung's Galaxy S23 is one of the best small Android phones you can buy right now in this moment. Wow. Um, so Whoop. I believe it is my duty now to convince you of why. Uh, so here is the teeny tiny S23. I'm going to show you. Ooh, that's a good teaser for later on. Let's remember teeny tiny, by the way. So <laughs> Here's the Pixel 7, so you can kind of see what the size difference is here. Okay. Let's see. Here, I'll show it to you relative to the Ultra, because that's what I, this is what I have within reach. All right. Oh, Look my at goodness. That. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at that. Look at, that. Look Look at all mm -hmm. those holes. Look nope. at all that. So nope. um, this is a great device. I was very pleased with the, this whole generation of the S23 has been really good for Samsung. And so if this is the direction they're going in, I think that's, that's good. Cause that means you're going to be buying a good product. I didn't mean for that to sound so like, Hmm, come on down. <laughs> but, uh, but in all honesty, I've had a couple of cases in the last couple of years where People have bought Samsung devices and have come to me and have said, like, I am not happy with the final product. And what's happening with me this year is that I'm noticing the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 lineup is not performing for me the way that the Pixel has always performed. So it feels it finally feels like Samsung is catching up to to where Google was trying to kind of like take the lead. Um, in particular, let's start out and let's just get into it. The camera algorithms on the S23 are so much better than they were on the last generation S22. Now, this is the regular variants that I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the S23 and the S23 Plus. They are pretty much the same on the inside, except for like two small little like minor differences. Uh, so let's talk about what they do have in common. They both have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processors on the inside with the little Samsung flare thrown in. They, um, they don't have the same, excuse me, they do have the same amount of RAM, which is something I didn't appreciate about last year's release was that the S23 Plus had a 12 gigabyte of RAM version, but this year they're both eight gigs. So it's kind of nice to just like, okay, I'm actually just picking phone sizes here. I'm not picking different experiences because that's when you're shopping for an iPhone, that's what the experience is. You're shopping for an iPhone 14, let's say you're getting two phones that are exact same thing. One is just bigger than the other. And so this is very much the same thing as that. This is a 6.1 inch, Display is the same as the 6.1 inch display on the iPhone 14, the smaller variant. Um, the S23 Plus is, good job, Flow, uh, putting this in your notes, is a 6.6 .6 inch display, which isn't like, if you think about it, it maybe isn't that much bigger, but you know, folks. I really missed like just having a small phone on me because the whole point of the Pixel 7 is that it was supposed to be a small phone, but I'm learning it's not as small as I thought it was. Uh, this one is a nicer size. Okay. And here's the other thing that is really nice about this is that even though this is a 6.1 inch screen, it is a super AMOLED Samsung display. So it's like carrying a Samsung TV in your pocket. And, uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. So things are really smooth sailing. It does affect battery life though. So this is kind of one bummer is that the battery life you're going to get on this phone is, I mean, it's better than the Pixel 7, but it's not as good as like, you know, the Ultra or maybe some other, even the OnePlus 11 actually outlasted this one in my battery tests. The Pixel 7 has a 90 hertz display. So already like just kind of thinking about this difference in, what you're getting, uh, the camera system on this, 
since I did talk about camera, 50 megapixel primary camera. It does all of the pixel binning magic that Samsung is known for. 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens on the back with optical image stabilization, 3x optical zoom and up to 30x space zoom, quote unquote. All right. So for our video watchers right now, very quickly, Burke, if you could leave it on the screen, I would like you, Ron and Wynn, to tell me which of these do you like better? These photos that we have up on screen. Hmm. I mean, aesthetically or quality? Aesthetically. I'm bad at these kind of tests. The one okay. on the left? Um, no, this is not a test. This is just, I want your opinion. I want your opinion. The one on the left, maybe? The lighter one? Okay. Or the one on the right? Mm -hmm. The It's got better blues. I don't know. Wynn, what do you think? The left has more range. It is more visually, I don't know, discernible, but I personally like the right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We got to pick one. We got to pick one. I'll pick the left. I, I think I'm left take the is left a little too. more balanced. Yeah, left. Did we get left, it wrong, left, though? Left. Did we get it wrong? No. No. The left is, so the <laughs> left is the Pixel 7. And the right so is the Galaxy S twenty three. But I wanted you guys, I wanted you to tell me what you noticed that was different because that's you know, obviously I wrote that. Samsung is known for since I've been on the show, I have talked about their saturation algorithms. So they always skew very blue. Whereas mm -hmm. yes, Google, I said that I said it was blue. Yeah, yeah. So they always skew very you blue, which is good in wrong. some situations. Right. I'm sorry, Burke, say that again. I said, but Ron changed his answer. No, oh, I didn't change okay. my answer. I said the left one, that was my gut reaction. I said, but the right one looked very blue. Let's, let's roll the tape. You heard me say that. <laughs> and okay. I true. will say that's what that dusk looked like in real life. It actually looked more like the Samsung version versus the Google oh. version tends to kind of like scale it back because the algorithm wants to bring everything to balance. But the Samsung version is more like, yeah. It's it's a gorgeous golden hour. Let's do this. The problem is, though, that now we're going to this point where it really is coming down to what color do you like better? Like what color temperature do you like better? Because now this is this is a Nikon versus Canon thing. Like back mm -hmm. in the day, people would be like, are you a Nikon or a Canon shooter? And it was usually A, because of the user interface and B, because of the color temperature. And so totally the same thing happening between Samsung and Pixel smartphones right now. So fascinating. So I, I actually didn't kinda, think our, our, our answers are kind of illustrative of that because you know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't notice anything like starkly different in quality. It's just more like, Oh, which do I like better? Do I like the blue? Yep. Cause it's moody or do I like the other one? Because I don't know, it just feels balanced and like, something, something, what pho pho photography should be something, something or whatever. So that's really, I think that that actually illustrates it really well, that our confusion or lack of <laughs> commitment until the end. I don't know. I, I think that's a great point. Yeah. Uh, color, Burke, color, if you color. wouldn't mind, thank you so much. I was just going to ask you to, so for our video watchers, we have up on screen a photo, nighttime, nighttime shots taken with both the Pixel 7 on the left and the Galaxy S23 on the right. Now, both of them, so I just want everybody to remember that the images on gizmodo.com are compressed, so you're not getting like the full, even what the video uh, viewers are saying, you're not getting the full but I'll tell you when I was inspecting them on my computer, I actually didn't like the pixel version. I know. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Somebody reacted somewhere. Uh, I know. <laughs> and the reason is because Google increased the lighting so much throughout the entire photo that it actually drowned out some of the ambiance of. Yeah the other elements of this photo. So in the very background of the Samsung photo, you'll notice that there's red over to kind of like the right center mm -hmm. behind. There you yeah. go. Yeah, where Burke is using the pointer. So back there, those are windmills over in Fairfield. And <sighs> those windmills have lights on at night so that the airplanes can see them and the Air Force practicing can see them. Those lights did not come out in any of the Pixel 7 nighttime shots that I took because Google essentially upped the brightness on that part of the photo so much that it drowned out like the contrast of that red against the night sky. So technically the Galaxy S23 is a little more like what it looked like to my naked eye in the dead of night. So 
And those are both taken on tripods, uh, four or five second exposures. And and that's kind of, it, it really comes down to a preference. And I, I preferred uh, I, the Samsung version. I was just going to say, it totally comes down to user choice. But it's funny because you said this is a Nikon Canon situation. And I guess if you're really into photography and phone choice, you're going to dig to look for those examples and see the differences. But like when people are standing in the carrier stores, they don't, they, they're not seeing those differences, right? Like mm -hmm. the average person yeah. won't know that they're getting the blue phone versus the lighter phone, right? Oh, yeah. that's true. And so in that case, I would say, um, it was in that case, let's talk about the UI, right? Because that's like the other thing that comes sure. into play. Yeah. Um, the UI for Samsung is uh, one UI based. <laughs> <laughs> and funny. kind of something that I was thinking while I was writing this review is I was thinking to myself, okay, so I wanted a small phone, which is why I bought the Pixel 7. It didn't end up being as small as I wanted it to be. So then I got this phone in for review and I was like, oh my God, this is exactly like the size that I wanted, right? Because it, it fits perfectly. And like, I have these teeny tiny purses over on the wall. It fits perfectly in there. Uh, in my pocket, it fits perfectly. I I didn't even mind like the screen size for reading, yada, yada. But then I get to the interface and I just enjoy the Material U package that I get on the Pixel 7 versus the... Now, granted, I do have an Agretsuko uh, theme going on this. Yes. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is, it, I do love Samsung themes, and I do include them in my reviews because I figure anybody who's buying this will go, like, if you want to go spend a dollar, you can get that exact same I'm thing in the Galaxy right App now. Store. So why not? And is I actually got a couple of emails about, I will say, every time I, I post a Samsung review with these themes, I get emails. Where did you get that theme? So, uh, Samsung Galaxy App Store, that's where you can get them. And besides that, though, like the default font and kind of like the resolution and all that, it's, yeah, it's just a different experience from the Pixel. So, I know this is a subjective review, but, uh, but, but the, making a choice in Android are, land is becoming harder. It's becoming harder. Reviews are subjective. I mean, it's your opinion. Yeah. This is what you think of it, right? I mean, that I'm not looking. We're not looking for like the the objective journalistic, you know, reporting on the the specs or whatever. It's like, what did you think, you know? And so, you know, and, and you recommend this because it's it's uh, it's one of the best small phones you can buy right now, as to your headline said. Two caveats. Two caveats. Hold on. Two caveats. Okay. Caveats. Before I move on. Yep. Yep. Uh, the first one is that it doesn't have ultra wide band support. Still. Mm. Still. That. I'm on Verizon. I want my ultra wideband. It's literally like all I have access to in terms of 5G where I live. So there's no point for me not to have that because I pay for it monthly. The other thing is that um, something interesting is that the 128 gigabyte version of this device has an older uh, storage spec than the higher capacity devices. Samsung devices. So Samsung uses UFS. That's uh, one of their protocols for storage. And the uh, Galaxy S23 and 128 has a slower uh, read and write speed. It might not seem like a big deal to some people. And it definitely won't be a big deal to anybody who's like at the carrier, you know, thinking about what uh, size to get. But it does mean that further down the line, you're going to see a beat. You're going to take a picture and it's going to take a second before it files over to the Android folder. You're going to go into a folder with a lot of assets and it's going to take a second before you can like go through that folder and see what you need. So it's just something slightly to consider. Also battery life could be better. But. All things to consider. All things to consider. Yeah.